So about a month or so ago, Dave Rubin announced that him and his husband were having two children. Now, we talked about on my show how the backlash from his conservative audience was overwhelming. They absolutely thought that that was unacceptable because they don't believe in gay parenting and they barely believe that homosexuality should be permissible, right? So he, for the first time uh, since talking with Glenn Beck afterwards, is going to respond directly to the backlash that he faced. And predictably, he's going to say something deeply disingenuous because this is Dave Rubin. He gets paid to lie. So um, Candace is going to bring this up to her credit, but let's let's listen. I think that there's no question that the conservative side is much more tolerant and able to have a, a civil conversation and say, I respectfully disagree with this one thing, but I see you as a... Please, there's no way that she believes that the right is more tolerant. I, I feel like it's inconceivable that even conservatives think that. Inconceivable. The right is not more tolerant. That's demonstrably false. It's just absurd that she says this with a straight face. Human being, and this is, I'm going to treat you like a human being. And it, it kind of... But as I was saying earlier, credit to her for saying, I view Dave Rubin as a hum human being and I'm going to treat you as a human being. You know, even though Candace Owens has very odious opinions on things, the fact that she's saying this, I think that that is important. But still, I mean, she contradicts herself. She's said homophobic things before. Um, but, you know, credit where it's due. It's the bare minimum to acknowledge a gay person as a human being. But in these dark times where the Republican Party is a fascist uh, movement at this point, you kind of have to acknowledge the small things, right? And give them credit for the small things where... Typically, you shouldn't have to give someone credit. I mean, you'd think in theory, just not being a shitty person is like the basic expectation. But no, it's not. Not in America. So I guess credit where it's due, Candace. Jumps into this, and, and I know this is, you probably talked about this ad nauseum, but it was such a fascinating thing to see you kind of go through the ringer uh, with your announcement on surrogacy. And I gave my opinion on the show, but I felt like when you made that announcement, suddenly you became a conduit. It really wasn't about you, but there was this much larger debate happening in the conservative movement about surrogacy and what it means. And Notice how she just said that conservatives are more tolerant, but she had to contradict herself there to bring up how he was put through the ringer. That's her words. You know, Ali Stuckey was kind of deep diving on what happens in this industry. Most people don't even know about this. It's so, you know, it's so new in America. And within America, like the surrogacy process is a lot different than it is overseas, which is something that I learned when I went to England. Um, what was it like going through that and, and, you know, just making this amazing announcement where, you know, this life, two boys are going to be born and seeing this side and then also seeing the left want to dunk on that of like, oh, this is what he gets for having friends that are on the right. How, what was it like going through it? Now, before he gives his answer, I've just got to say that I know that if Dave Rubin were to answer honestly, he would say, it felt like shit. It felt horrible. It made me question my life decisions. It made me think, Jesus Christ, I've been trying so hard to rehabilitate the right's image. You know, they've been seen as intolerant for years, rightfully so, because they are. And I've tried to help them and then they shit on me and it just pissed me off. Like if he were honest, he would say that. But of course, that's not what he's going to say. And he's going to blame the left. Now, she talks about how the left was dunking on him for this. And she's right. We were dunking on him for this uh, because, I mean, you chose to align with far right extremists knowing that they are homophobic. And he's claimed like he's the one person in this whole movement who perhaps more so than Candace Owens, who's used his identity as a gay man to claim that conservatives are actually more tolerant than liberals and leftists and that blew up in his face right so to point that out yeah i guess you could say that that's dunking but it's also him finding out after you know fucking around it's you reaping what you sow well you know uh laying in the bed that you made for yourself but at the same time that doesn't mean that he deserves to be treated like shit no the reason why people were responding to this on the left is because you don't deserve to be treated poorly and you are subjecting yourself to this purposefully because you are valuing money over your own human dignity. But of course, he's not going to address any of this. He's going to blame, um, yes, the left. Now, not as overtly as, as, as before, but he's going to, um, he's going to take a shot at the left here. 
Well, there were like so many different layers of it. So let me just hit the last one first, because all of the tolerant lefties were seemingly so thrilled to tell me how the people on the right hated me. It's like, well, are you guys showing me tolerance? I didn't get any love or affirmation from you guys. So the left is intolerant because we showed him how intolerant the right is. That doesn't even make sense. The right was enthusiastically telling you that you're a kidnapper. I mean, Mark Dice, giant conservative, said what you did was perverted. Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos said that you and your husband should be executed, Dave Rubin. So who's more intolerant? He knows. And look, Dave Rubin is an imbecile, right? His IQ is probably in the single digits, but he's at least smart enough to know who really is and isn't tolerant. He's a gay man, right? There's a reason why he moved to, I think it was Florida, and he didn't choose to move to Alabama, right? He wanted to get out of these blue states, but um, he didn't choose to go to Alabama or Kentucky. He chose to go to, uh, you know, the most uh, bluest or purplest red state that he can find, right? Probably in a very liberal city um, because he knows, deep down, he knows if he absolutely believed that the right was more tolerant than the left, then he would go to the deepest red county in this country and hold hands with his husband in public. We know he's not going to do that because you would subject yourself to abuse potentially, even in liberal cities. It's not like you're necessarily, you know, immune to that. So he knows, but he's lying because again, that's what he's paid to do. Now, the irony, of course, is that I got 99% love. Now, the internet's a weird freaking place. There's a lot of mean people and trolls. Mm, I wouldn't say it was 99%. Like, it seemed like it was a pretty significant portion of your own fan base who turned on you. Now, I'm not sure, just like, off the top of my head, it was like 50%, probably. 99%, that's a huge fucking stretch. And click bait people and all of that stuff. You're one of them. 99% of what I got, especially from the public people that I'm associated with, some of the names who I mentioned already was all love. And by the way, I don't expect everyone who I'm friends with or associated with to have to acknowledge something publicly. A lot of people texted me privately or called me and that's just fine. You know, Forbes wrote a piece that said that Dave Rubin's audience and allies turn on him. And it had a picture, literally a picture of me and you on your set no that you're sitting on right now. It did not even mention you in the article. But I mean, like, Okay, the picture maybe wasn't relevant, but the headline is absolutely correct. Because they were trying to say that my audience was leaving me, my friends are leaving me, doesn't mention you in the article. I had my best month ever across all platforms last month, so they just make it up completely. Well, you know, they use um, my face. I mean, I don't know what the article said. I don't really feel like digging into the article, but I doubt that the article said, oh, his friends left him. I mean, people who are on your side who you are aligned with politically were shitting on you and calling you a degenerate. That's what I'm assuming the crux of the article is. That's what the left was talking about, you know? And this is why we're telling you it's immoral to do propaganda for this uh, political faction that fucking hates your guts. But he's still doing it, and he's not gonna stop. I'm pretty and people click it. I realized yeah. this. I swear, I said this to my executive producer. Yeah. I said, I said, Michael, and do you know how many times I've been a, a picture in an article with and I'm not mentioned at all? And I said, it must be because I have a very clickable face. So I'm going with that it, theory. Candace, you got that million dollar <laughs> smile and they know it's going to generate clicks. No, that's what you wrote in the tweet. You were like, well, the two of us do look we pretty good. good picture, so that's yeah. <laughs> yeah um, but look, most of it was love. Look, are there going to be some people? So we, there's two separate issues here in terms of a same sex couple having kids. And then there's the IVF thing. So. So are there gonna be some traditional religious conservatives that are not happy with same-sex marriage and same-sex couples having kids? Of course there are. I believe in religious liberty, and as long as your beliefs don't impede on my life and my ability to have a family and all that stuff, then I still think we can live in the same country, and I would hope that they can too. You're but Dave, they're saying that you shouldn't be able to do what you're doing. They're saying that you adopting children should not be allowed. There are so many conservatives who still think that you shouldn't be allowed to be married. I mean, the Supreme Court in the draft decision, Alito claimed that uh, Lawrence v. Texas, that decision which said that you can't criminalize sodomy, which means anal or oral sex, by the way, a lot of people don't know that. Um, so it would apply to straight people too, but would only be enforced against gay people. But uh, either way, 
you know, Alito claimed that that wasn't explicitly enumerated in the Constitution. Therefore, it's not a right. So, you know, he's signaling that he wants to overturn that. So there are conservatives in this country who think that being gay quite literally should be criminalized. So, I mean, if he doesn't know this, then he's stupid. But he does know this. And we all dunk on Dave for being a dummy. But he knows these things. He's not that stupid. Allowed to believe what you want. Just like you, Candace, I was invited a couple of years ago to speak at Liberty University convocation in front of 14,000 evangelical kids. They know who I am, and they gave me a standing ovation. It's but the thing about that is that you weren't talking about your gay identity. You see, conservatives, assuming any of them are willing to tolerate you at all, which some of them are not, but if they're going to tolerate you, they will tolerate you in so far as you don't talk about your gay identity unless huge caveat you're using your gay identity to legitimize their bigoted views if you say it's fine for bakers to be able to kick us out of the store and not bake us a, a cake because we're gay if you're saying things like that it's fine talk about your homosexuality but talking about how you and your husband are starting a life together and having a family that crosses the line because they don't want to hear about it out of sight out of mind if you start reminding them that you're gay and you have a gay husband who you love and are intimate with then that's when they're like oh no can't accept this and they're using you and you're willing to be used even dennis prager said you're useful to them by pretending to be a liberal and you've used your gay identity before to legitimize legitimize homophobia so i mean you you cite that as if that confirms that they don't care that you're gay no not at all they do care that you're gay they care that you're gay and embraced you because you can be the gay man that says homophobia is fine this homophobic law is fine as you're doing with don't say gay right think about how idiotic this is uh the don't say gay thing it's all about not grooming children basically this law makes it so teachers have to hide their identities and they can't acknowledge that gay people exist otherwise they could be fired because if you acknowledge that that uh gay or trans people exist then um I guess the kids will apparently become gay or trans immediately like that. It's almost like a magical spell. Um, and so, you know, it's all about grooming and shit like that, according to them. Now, Dave Rubin canceled his Disney Plus account because Disney claimed that they wanted to increase representation for LGBTQ plus people. Now, conservatives said that was bad because, again, they think being gay is a choice and having kids see more gay people is going to make them gay. So... Dave Rubin, in solidarity with the right, canceled Disney Plus because he also thinks gay representation is bad. So, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how are you going to raise two kids? Because if you agree with the right that kids seeing uh, homosexuality uh, or just seeing that gay people exist is going to turn them gay and groom them, how are you going to raise your kids? Are you going to put like a fucking garbage bag over your husband's head and put him in the corner are you gonna lie to them and say that this is like your cousin or some shit how are you gonna do that it's it's completely infeasible by their standards you're grooming and you're agreeing with them so they support you as a gay man only if you're gonna use your gay identity to attack other gay people but the minute you start saying i'm a gay person with ambitions and i want to start a family that's when they draw the line that's what he needs to understand doesn't mean that they all love me at, you know, they all agree with me on everything, but I actually do think most of them love me. And, and that's what America is all they about. They don't, they're so, using you. First off, I expected a little pushback just on the religious side. That's one thing. I expected a little pushback. Mm -hmm. You think? On the IVF side, it's, look, it's very, very complex. We can, we can do a deep dive into the science on all of that. And I don't want to share every little bit, you know, more privately on, on how difficult it was and, you know, there were all sorts of things related to COVID. There were more, uh, my fertility doctor told us that he saw more abortion, uh, not, sorry, not abortions. He saw more miscarriages um, in the two years of COVID that he had ever seen in his whole career. And they couldn't chalk it up to anything other than general states of stress. So it's not like we had all of these embryos that were viable and that they're gonna be aborted and a bunch of other things. We can get into more of that if you want, but I understand that there are some ethical issues around that, I really do. But also, you know, it's funny because now there's this whole abortion conversation and I actually have a lot more firsthand knowledge of the science behind pregnancy because, you know, when you do it through IVF, uh, you know, they put the sperm and the egg together, not to give you remedial science from eighth grade, but they put the sperm and the egg together. It's not two sperm? Literally, it's not two sperm, I do acknowledge that I am not a. <laughs> it's not two sperm, 
Really? Two men can't make a baby? Hmm. Yeah, see, this is the problem because they are going to say this to you and they did say this to you. It's unnatural. But I I'm curious. Like, I, I think that's basically all that he says about the backlash. He's switchly, uh, uh, quickly switching gears because he doesn't want to talk about this because I'm assuming it hurts. Like, he's a gay man and I, I know that that hurts. I have firsthand experience. Homophobia sucks. It hurts and it's painful. He probably doesn't want to talk about it. But I'm wondering if he's going to say, oh, well, because of this experience, it made me think twice about abortion. Like, I wonder what the conclusion is going to be from this. Science. Well, I'm not a biologist, Candace, but I'm just <laughs> I'm just repeating what they tell me. <laughs> they can tell you the gender the day later. And yet we live in a society that will tell you, A, that's not a life and B, gender doesn't exist. So perhaps my fertility doctor is a complete psychopath or... Maybe reality does exist. Maybe gender does exist. Maybe life does exist. Yeah, it's, it's funny because the pro-abortion... And then we can abortion... extrapolate all the... Okay, that, they're going in a different direction. Dave, nobody is saying that gender doesn't exist. There are people who are gender abolitionists that don't want there to be a gender, but still they acknowledge that gender exists. Sex exists. You're finding out the baby's sex. That's what you're finding out. I love that the overall takeaway from this is not to rethink his worldview. It's to double down on his conservatism and think actually the takeaway isn't that I was wrong and that the right is actually more intolerant. The takeaway is that abortion bad, trans people bad as well. I mean, this is why they pay Dave Rubin the big bucks. It's because he will shit on his own community and say foolish things, make an ass of himself, but he gets paid for it. So that's, uh, that's why he does it. He's craving enough to subject himself to this and okay, you know, that's that's what you've chosen for yourself, but um, it's gross and we're absolutely allowed to call it out.